G'day folks, just in the process of building a little silent air compressor and using one of the really small refrigeration compressors that I've got. Basically what you need is, I suppose if you don't have access to it, you don't have to use it, uh, flare fittings and flared pipe. These are just bits from an old air conditioner. You'll need a pressure reservoir, an accumulator. Uh, it could be a tank of whatever size you want, depending on the size of compressor you're using. I'm using this little refrigerant accumulator. Obviously you'll need a gauge. With PSI or KPA. I'm going to be running it at 800 KPA. A pressure control. This one's from a refrigeration system. It's a big semi-hermetic one. Uh, it doesn't have to be one of these. You can use a uh, conventional pressure switch from a commercial air compressor and you need something to house it in. I'm just going to use this old uh, Pentium 3 550 case. Just rip the main board and crap out. Hopefully you have enough room to accommodate the accumulator, piping, switch gear, uh, mount the gauge on the front panel, and uh, the compressor. Basically once you're done ripping the guts out of your computer, you can start working on fitting all the components in. I've already done a lot of work on this. The camera ran out of batteries last weekend. I'm resuming a week later. This is the compressor down the bottom. You don't have to put the compressor down the bottom. I just put it there so that you have a bit of that balance. The tank's not as heavy as the compressor and it just makes it a bit more stable. Uh, the inlet doesn't have to be pressure tube or anything, I'm just using an old filter dryer. Wiring is going to go through that pressure control in there. The suction, or sorry, the discharge line, I've left a long loop in it so that if there is any wo wobble in the compressor, because it is on rubber mounts, it won't stress crack or fracture the joint of the tube. Gives it a bit of survivability if it gets knocked about. Whereas if you would just go straight up and onto here, there's two little flecks in it and one of these solder joints or the copper itself is going to crack. I decided to use a slightly bigger accumulator as well. I initially knocked the valve off this, but I've been able to solder a little piece in and fix her up. You can build these as complicated or as simple as you want. I've gone for a slightly more complicated model using a lot of copper pipe and refrigeration components. Basically if you can get your hands on a busted old portable air, con air compressor and just pull the switch and pressure regulator off that you'll be right. Whereas I'm going for a slightly more high-tech approach. I had to cut bits out of the drive bay and whatnot to get all this tank and compressor in but with the side panels and top panel on it's actually quite rigid. I'm going to retain the original look of a computer, but I'll replace these front fascias with a solid panel and just cut the gauge in. So instead of having disc drives, you've got a big pressure gauge. And the back's just going to have a standard uh, uh, JMAC type push, push fitting. I suppose another option for this uh, silent air compressor project would be to take a condensing unit like this. It came out of an old flushy machine or something like that. My mate pulled it out. It's a fairly recent model, actually. But the only thing it'd really need would be a pressure regulator and a uh, switch. A pressure switch. But again, you still have to attach a tank over the top and encase it in a uh, outer housing. The other advantage is it does have a condensing coil on it, so I suppose it would condense any moisture that's coming out of it so that you can trap it in a water trap. This one here doesn't have a condensing coil, so water's going to build up in the bottom of this tank and eventually rust it. I don't intend on using it that many times that it'll really create a problem, but in the long term, if you want to make a long term air compressor, you will need a dump valve to dump any uh, excess moisture build up. I can't remember what kind of machine this came out of, it's a slushy machine or some sort of little vending machine recent model.
I mean, the condensing coil is no bigger than my hand, so it's really small. But it does still work. Cleaned it right up. This is yet another Danfoss item. It seems a lot of uh, Australian manufacturers love Danfoss and can't blame them. They make some of the best, best, <coughs> sorry, best stuff on the market. There's a PL50. I know Electrolux use Danfoss products and most refrigeration technicians I know use Danfoss products. Even I use Danfoss products. A lot of it's sold as scrap metal. I just pick it up out of the steel bin at the local scrapyard. The accumulator in this thing came from a uh, Australian built Kirby refrigeration unit. It's used in an IGA supermarket meat case. It's actually the same accumulator that the uh, Kirby reciprocating compressor came from. The one in one of my earlier videos. The pressure control switch isn't hooked up at the moment. I haven't actually got it calibrated properly. It's tripping its overload at about 390 kPa. So I've just got to tweak these little adjustments on it and make it cut the compressor out at the set pressure that I want but not actually go into overload mode and require that, that little button press to reset it. But overall it is working quite well. It's just tripped another switch, I'm not sure which one that is. That's the overload. And that's at uh, 600 kPa way too low. But apart from that problem then there's no other real issues with this unit. Let's finish off the casing, mount the gauge, mount the JMAC discharge point and seal her up with the housing. The tank discharge test at almost 1200 kPa I'm using a standard 205-16 SUV tyre tube, almost completely flat as my discharge vessel. This is starting now. It's a pretty reasonable amount of air in there. That's actually pretty good. Almost dead. Very hard. Looks like if I crammed any more in there, should burst. And that was at 1200 kPa or 175 psi in this little tank. Just a little practical test here. Let's just say uh, you're desperate to get your morning coffee and your small SUV has a almost flat tyre, so about 10 pounds in it. It's 6am and you don't want to wake the neighbours up by firing up a big hydrovane compressor or anything, so let's just see if the micro computer case compressor can top this thing up to get you to the coffee shop. Yeah, about 30 pounds. It's a standard 16 inch small SUV tyre you find on a RAV4 or a Subaru Forester, Honda CRV. Yeah, about 32 pounds. It's pretty good. Considering the size of the reservoir. 